Chapter 11 The Quit India Movement The civil disobedience movement came to an end in 1934. The Parliament of England passed an act in 1935 granting certain constitutional rights to Indians. According to this act, Indians were to get more constitutional rights. The Act of 1935 This act provided for the formation of a federation of British administered provinces and the Indian princely states. Accordingly, the working of the British administered provinces was to be transferred to the Indian representatives. The rulers of the princely states refused to join the federation on the ground that they would lose their autonomy if they joined the federation. As a result, the federal scheme in the act did not come to fruition. Provincial Elections The Indian National Congress was not satisfied with the Act of 1935. Still, the Congress decided to take part in the provincial elections that were to be held under this Act. The elections were held in 11 provinces in the country in 1937. The Congress ministries came to power in 8 of the provinces. In the remaining 3 provinces, no single party could secure a majority and therefore mixed governments were formed. The Congress ministries did useful and constructive work for the people. Political prisoners were released from jails. Basic education was introduced. Measures were undertaken to improve the condition of the Dalits. Liquor was prohibited. An act was passed giving debt relief to peasants. The Second World War and the National Congress In 1939, the Second World War began in Europe. The then Indian Viceroy Lynn Lithgow declared that India had joined the war on the side of England. England had claimed that it was fighting to save democracy in Europe. The Congress thereupon demanded that if England's claim was honest, it should at once grant independence to India. As England declined to immediately fulfill this demand, the Provincial Congress Ministries resigned in November 1939. Individual Satyagraha As it became evident that the British government was constantly ignoring their demands, the Congress decided to start an anti-war propaganda. With this end in view, it was decided that individuals would break laws singly. This is known as Individual Satyagraha. The first such Satyagrahi was Acharya Vinoba Bhave. He was followed by nearly 25,000 individual Satyagrahis. Crips Mission During the Second World War, England sided with America against Japan. The Japanese forces came close to the eastern borders of India. England then found the cooperation of the Indians indispensable in order to resist Japan in case it invaded India. Therefore, the British Prime Minister Churchill sent Sir Stafford Cripps to India. Cripps came to India in March 1942. He placed certain proposals about India before the Indians. These proposals did not satisfy any political party in India. There was no clear mention of the demand for complete independence in these proposals. The Congress, therefore, rejected them. The Crips plan did not include the creation of Pakistan. Therefore, the Muslim League also turned down the plan. Quit India Movement After the Crips mission, the Congress firmly resolved to intensify the movement for freedom. The Working Committee of the Congress passed a resolution on 14 July 1942 at Vardha. The resolution demanded that the British rule in India be ended immediately giving India independence. A warning was also issued that if the demand was not met with, the Congress would launch a non-violent struggle for India's independence. Quit India Resolution A session of the Congress began at the Gowalia tank, Kranti Maidan, in Mumbai on 7th August 1942. Maulana Abul Kalam Azad was the president of the session. The resolution of the Congress Working Committee passed at Vardha 
that the British should leave India was to be finally approved in the Mumbai session. This Quit India resolution moved by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru on the 8th August was passed with an overwhelming majority. It was also decided to start a nationwide non-violent movement under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhiji said, Every one of you should, from this moment onwards, consider yourself a free man or woman. The mantra is, do or die. We shall either free India or die in the attempt. Gandhiji thus made a stirring appeal to the people to be ready to sacrifice even their lives to free their country. The People's Movement Begins The British government tried to crush the movement before it started. On the morning of 9th August, prominent leaders like Gandhiji, Maulana Azad, Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai Patel, etc. were arrested. The news of the arrest of the leaders spread all over the country like wildfire. People's anger knew no bounds. They took out processions in every place. Although the police made lati charges and opened fire, the agitators were undeterred. People tried to take possession of government offices at many places. At some places, the people attacked jails, police stations and railway stations which symbolized the oppression of the British government. The police opened fire on the people. Carrying the Indian tricolor, school children in Nandurbar took out a procession. They gave shouts of Vande Mataram. The infuriated policemen opened fire even on these small children. Shirish Kumar, a young student, fell a martyr to this firing. In Maharashtra, the young and the old alike struggled with great tenacity and courage. The struggles at many places like Chimur, Ashti, Yavli, Mahad, Gargoti, etc. have become immortal. Underground Movement Towards the end of 1942, People's Movement took a new turn. Its leadership passed into the hands of young socialist leaders who had gone underground. Jai Prakash Narayan, Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia, Chotu Bhai Puranik, Achyut Rao Patwardhan, Aruna Asaf Ali, Yusuf Meher Ali, Sucheta Kriplani, S. M. Zoshi, Shirubhav Limay, N. G. Gore, Yashwantrao Savan, Maganlal Bagdi and others were at the forefront of the movement. The agitators disrupted communication and the government machinery by damaging railway tracks, cutting telegraph wires, blowing up bridges and so on. Groups like the Azad Dasta of Bhai Kotwal in Karzat Taluka of today's Raigad district and the Lal Sena of General Awari in Nagpur rendered the government helpless and witless for several months. Vithal Zaveri, Usha Mehta and their associates had set up a secret transmission center in Mumbai. It was known as Azad Radio. It used to broadcast patriotic songs, speeches inspiring patriotism and news about the agitation in the country. This encouraged the people to carry on the agitation. Such transmission centers were in operation for some time at Kolkata, Delhi and Pune. Establishment of Parallel Governments People drove away the British officers from the districts of Midnapur in Bengal, Balia and Azamgarh in Uttar Pradesh and Bhagalpur and Purnia in Bihar and then established parallel governments there. Kranti Singh Nana Patil established a parallel government in the district of Satara. He was a source of inspiration for the people. With the help of his associates, he ended the British administration there and established a people's government. This government looked after such works as collecting taxes, maintaining law and order, punishing the criminals and so on. This government appointed people's courts which dispensed justice. The people, too, accepted the verdicts of these courts. To inculcate the love for their nation in the minds of the children, various organizations like the Rashtra Seva Dal, Azad Sena, Tufan Sena were formed. This government also undertook constructive work such as opposing the tyranny of money lenders, prohibition of liquor, propagation of literacy and opposition to caste distinctions. 
That is why this parallel government won the wholehearted support of the people. Nature of the August Revolution The People's Movement of 1942 had fired up all parts of the country. Millions of Indians made great sacrifices for achieving the goal of independence. Many sacrificed their lives. The number of people participating in the struggle was so great that even all the prisons in the whole of the country were not enough to contain them. The patriotic songs composed by Sane Guruji, Rashtrasant Tukaroji Maharaj and others enthused the agitators further. This nationwide movement is also known as the August Revolution.